Stayallday.com. Before we start, please like and comment on this video so I can get your feedback. Also, click that subscribe button so you can get all the new content I'm dropping on this channel. And the free book, the mental handbook, physical book, work on your game university, just take care of the shipping and handling, send this right to your doorstep. Let's get started. What's going on, everybody? Dre Balls on DreAllDay.com. And today we're talking, talking about the basketball theorists. I want to make sure that all of you get clear on how to deal with the basketball theorists. First of all, how to identify them, who it is, what they do, how to identify the theorists, and how to make sure you can kind of create a shield around yourself to protect yourself from the theorists of basketball. So this video is for the players. This video is for you players out there who are aspiring players. And when I say aspiring players, that means wherever you play now, you have aspirations to play at an even higher level than that. So I'm making this video for you all. So you could be a seventh grader looking to make the eighth grade team, a middle schooler trying to make it in high school, or a high schooler trying to make varsity, a high school player you want to play in college, college player want to play in the pros, pro player want to play at a higher level or keep your career going. That's, what this, that's who this video is for. I want you to understand who the basketball theorists are. And I'll tell you an example from my own experience. And we could just use YouTube as an experience. I've had over the last 11 years making videos on YouTube, 10 years making videos on YouTube, I've responded to over a million comments, a million comments, and then you combine the private messages, the Facebook messages, tweets, DMs, now we got snaps, all of that stuff put together, over a million comments on the topic of basketball. Huh? Every once in a while, I'd say out of a million comments, maybe a hundred times in 10 years, 10 times a year, someone leaves a comment similar to, I'll be doing some drill on the court where I'm shooting the ball, like taking the actual jump shot. Somebody will say something like, well, the way you shot the ball with the way your shooting form is, it kind of went like behind your head or it's kind of slow or there's a lot of movement in your form. So if you do that in the game, then a the guy who's playing defense is going to block your shot. Or I'll do a move. Maybe I'm doing some, maybe it's a driving move or a shooting move, but it's a lot of ball handling. You know, you're kind of doing the dancing that I do sometimes in the drills. And I explain that you do that not because you're gonna do the move specifically in the game or because it's gonna make the defense do a certain thing, but because you're developing skills as you do all that. And when you get in the game, you might need only half of that move or you might only need 10% of that move to get what you need to get. But those are instincts that you have to develop by playing in games. You're developing the skills by playing in practice, like the toolbox and know how to use the tools. And I explain that in a free PDF called how to play basketball as well as you practice. If you don't know about that, you don't have it. Go to DreAllDay.com slash play. DreAllDay.com slash play. There's a free PDF. We'll send it to your email inbox. But anyway, when I do a video like that, somebody will say, I remember this specifically. Like, <laughs> this had to be about maybe four or five years ago. Someone who, someone who I know, I was friends with on Facebook. I don't remember who it was. They took this video of some drill that I was doing where I'm doing all the dribbling, and they posted it on their Facebook page. And they tagged my name, like, hey, this is a Dre Baldwin video. Tag me in the video, not in the video, but in the post, posted on Facebook. And then when he had posted it, I saw it was a bunch of comments. I got the notification, like somebody tagged you in a post. So then I'm looking at, it was a few comments there, and I didn't even reply to anything, because I didn't know none of the people replying. I didn't even know he was gonna post the video. But at, in the drill, there was this fat white dude. <laughs> it don't have nothing to do with him being white, but it was a fat dude who said, well, in a real game, any de any good defender would stop that because, and then he tried to explain why it wouldn't work out. And I'm looking at this guy, I'm looking at his profile picture, <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, like, what the hell is this fat dude going to tell me about what a real a real game or a real basketball player? He's never experienced either one. But anyway, also on YouTube, going back to my original comment, somebody will say, well, because you shot like that, a defender is going to stop that. It makes it real easy to block or for a defender to really stop you from getting your shot. And I'm looking at this in the comments, and I'm thinking to myself, like, dude, I've played basketball against you no know, defenders. I've played millions of games of bat not I wouldn't even say millions, thousands of games of basketball against a lot of players, high school, college, pro, street ball level players, and gotten paid to do it. But this guy's telling me how somebody's gonna block my shot because of the way that I shoot, in theory. And I understand, and I've actually sometimes replied to these comments. And I say to the theorists who say things like this. I got good news for you and also have bad news for you. The good news is your theory, just in theory, could be 100% correct. You could be 100% absolutely right in your theory. Bad news is basketball is not played in theories. Basketball is played on courts, in gyms, on parks, hardwood, concrete, pavement, 
what they call asphalt. Basketball is not played in theories. Another theory would be somebody saying something like, well, even before the NBA Finals this past, last season's NBA Finals, people are like, well, the Warriors are going to win because if Steph Curry does this, then Klay Thompson does that, LeBron James does this, and Kevin Love is going to do that, so there's no way the Cavs can win. Or even if you thought the Cavs were going to win, you say, all right, well, Kyrie Irving is going to do this, and the defender is going to do that, and then LeBron is going to do that, and Tristan Thompson is going to do that, so then that means they're going to win. People always have these theories of how things are going to work out when they're looking at it, talking about it, thinking about it. Listen, life does not work in theories. Theories are often, theories often sound so clean, so crisp, so clear, so basic, so easy to understand. You're like, damn, you know what? That person's right. If you just listen to somebody's theory, you're like, you know what? They're absolutely right. Dre, your shot is going to get blocked. You know what? That fat dude on Facebook is right, Dre. You can't do that move against a good defender. You know, <laughs> that, those people on YouTube are right, Dre. There's no way the Cavs can win. Look at all the tools that the Warriors got. If this guy does this, then this guy's doing it. And if Steph Curry don't do it, then Klay Thompson's going to do it. And Draymond's going to do it. And LeBron can't do all of it. And Kyrie can't do this. In theory, it's impossible for the Cavs to win again. In theory, Dre, it's impossible for you to even get a jump shot to even get to the rim because every good defender is going to block your shot. In theory, Dre, none of those moves will ever work because any good defender could just see it coming and just stop you. So in theory, nothing will work. In theory, most of you probably would never even be successful in basketball. In theory, the theorist probably knows more about basketball than the person who's actually on the court playing. But I'm going to explain to you how to identify these theorists and how to inundate yourself. Actually, that's the wrong word, completely wrong word. How to... The word is escaping me. How to protect yourself mentally from the theorists who are going to come your way in basketball. And let me tell you a secret. The more known you get in basketball, the more successful you become in basketball, the more the theorists will come around sharing their theories for and about you. So here's the thing. Now that I already told you about theorists, how to spot them. Here's the number one way you're going to spot a theorist. They're the person who's always watching the game but never actually doing it. Theorists is the person watching the game telling you what's gonna happen, telling you how your move's not gonna work, telling you why you lost the game, trying to analyze why this player is better than you or why you're not that good or why you're better than somebody else. Maybe they're doing it in a positive way. Often they're doing it in a negative way because that's usually what gets more attention. Negativity just spreads faster than positive energy. Theorist is a person who's always watching and talking about what's going on, but they're never the one actually doing the thing that's going on. Now that I explained that, I think many of you could probably right off the top of your head think of some theorists who you know, right? Some people just always talking about the game, but they ain't never, you never see them actually playing, but they know so much because they always talking. That's the first way you spot a theorist. Second way that you, you can spot a theorist, theorist always knows exactly what you need to do to get better. A theorist knows exactly what you need to do to make it to the next level. A theorist knows why you're not at the next level. A theorist knows why you're averaging 10 points and not averaging 15 points. The theorist knows exactly what you need to change about your jump shot Dre, so your shot doesn't get blocked when you play against really good basketball players. The theorist, the fat guy on Facebook, Dre, the theorist knows exactly why that move won't work. And he will tell you the perfect move that will work against a good basketball player because obviously he knows. The theorist knows exactly what you need to do. The theorist is the person who sees LeBron James drop to the hole and dunk it and says, oh, why don't he just drop to the hole and dunk it every time? Why don't he just do that every time? Nobody can stop him. He can do that all again. That's the theorist. Hopefully none of you, hopefully I'm not describing any of you. And this video, just so we, just so y'all know that we eight minutes into the video, this video is not for the theorists. This video is for the players. This video is for the people doing stuff. This video is not for the people who talk about the people who do stuff. This video is for the people who are the people being talked about because you're doing stuff. Just to be clear, I think I'm probably, I think I pretty much, I think you all pretty much know that to this point in the video. Here's another way you can see the theorists. I call it the talk about and get talked about ratio. This is something that I've mentioned many times. I never specifically labeled it this. I may do a whole video on this topic. Talk, talked about versus the get talked about ratio. And just me saying what that is, many of you can probably infer what that means. You look at the amount of time you spend, the amount of energy you put into talking about what somebody else is doing, what somebody else did, what you think of somebody else, what somebody else might do, what they couldn't do, what they will do, what they did do already versus how much time, how much energy gets put into anyone, anywhere in the world, talking about you. If you spend more time talking about than getting talked about, you could possibly be a theorist. Now you right now might think, well, Dre, nobody really knows me. I haven't really gotten any exposure. I don't really have a, a lot of 
game right now. Maybe maybe I just need to work on my game. Maybe I need to get better. Maybe I need to go play for another team. Maybe I got to wait till this tryout in six months so I can get known, so people can start talking about me. Cool. If you're in that situation, it's fine. It doesn't mean anything wrong with you because you can't always control how many people are going to talk about you. You got to, like you said, get yourself seen, get to the right places, do the right things at the right time. I get it. But you can always control how much time you spend talking about anybody else. See, your amount of time and energy you spend talking about anybody else can be anywhere from zero to 100 real quick. You can make it zero any moment that you want. You can spend zero time, zero effort, zero energy, zero attention talking about other people. I don't care if it's Steph Curry and LeBron James. I don't care if it's a dude around the corner. I don't care if it's your best friend. You ain't got to spend no time talking about nobody else. Because I've said this multiple times in videos. The people who are the most successful in life, and don't take my word for this, think of the most successful people you know, and when you see them, you ask them. Call them and ask them right now. They spend the least amount of time talking about, thinking about what anybody else is doing. Their focus is on what they need to do. Do they know what other people are doing? Do they do they research their field and know the competition and all that? Of course. But they spend more time focusing on what they need to do than they spend focusing on what anybody else is doing, might do, could do, what this guy said about that girl. No. People who are getting it done are people focused on themselves. Now, if you don't, again, don't take my word for it. Find the most successful person you know, whoever you know that's successful, and ask them that question. How much time do you spend talking about thinking about what other people are doing compared to how much time you spend focused on what you need to do? I guarantee the number is going, the result is going to maybe change the way that you think about things. So the talked about the get talked about ratio. Number four, this is an important one about a theorist because this is, this is what makes a theorist in their mind. A theorist mentally thinks that there's nothing you can say back to them. A theorist believes they're always right. And this is their, the trump card of the theorist is this. They will always one up you no matter what proof you have of knowing what you're talking about because you've actually done it. That's the proof. The theorist who's done nothing always has a way to one up your action, to one up your actual experience, your real life proof. And this is what it is. If you're a middle school player, the theorist will say, well, yeah, you, yeah, you, were, you were able to shoot that shot in middle school, but you're not going to be able to shoot that when you play against high school players. <laughs> if you're a high school player, the theorist says, well, yeah, you did it in high school, but you're not going to score all those points in college. If you're in college, they're going to say, yeah, you're doing that in college, but you're still an amateur. You got to go to the pros and really prove it. If you're in the pros, they're going to say, well, yeah, you do, you did your thing overseas, but you wouldn't do that if you was playing in the D-League. You're playing in the D-League, they're going to say, yeah, you did your thing in the D-League, but you wouldn't do that if you was playing in the NBA. Or you do it in the NBA, they got, like, yeah, yeah, you scored 10 points a game in the NBA, but that's only because you was coming off the bench playing against the second second unit guys. If you were a starter, you wouldn't be scoring that many points because the starters, starters play better defense and they would shut you down. No matter what you do, <laughs> the theorist always has a one-up for you. And here's the reason why, because the theorist doesn't have to prove anything that they're saying. All the theorist has to do is find anyone in the world who has met their example and say, see, there it is. And they can take anything that you've done, all they're gonna do, even if you've done this much, you got a high level of achievement, you're in the top 1%, they're gonna go to the top half percent. They're gonna say, well, the people in the top half percent, you wouldn't be successful if you were in that. And this is, you can actually take this outside of basketball. You can take this whole video, everything I'm talking about outside of basketball. The theorist knows a whole lot about who can, who can't, who did, who didn't, who will, who won't. Actually, they've never done it, but they know about it. And they can tell you all about it. And if you happen to be the one person out there doing it, oh, the theorist got a lot to say to you. The theorist got a whole lot of advice for you. The theorist is the first person to offer you advice when they feel like you failed, when they feel like you haven't done enough. Yet the theorist has not proven any of their, their acts, their advice they haven't proved any of their ideas they haven't proved that anything they do actually works their proof is that somebody else did it. their proof is that he did it. their proof is that well she failed at it the proof is that well you only scored this much the proof is that well you didn't make the team the proof is that well you're not in the nba the proof is something that has everything to do of with people outside of themselves that's who the theorist is so i'm telling all of you this all you basketball players this that once you have those theorists once you understand the theorists you gotta understand they're never going away. Theorists ain't going away. And if you've been playing ball long enough, any of you who are watching this, you already know what I'm talking about. You just nodding your head as I'm talking here. You know exactly what I'm talking about. And you probably know some people who are just like this. You probably know them by name. They probably know you by name. They probably thinking about you right now, thinking about something to say to you next time they see you on the court. They always gonna be here. They're never going away. They're like roaches, like rats. There's always gonna be some somewhere. What you need to do is accept them. Accept the fact that they exist. Accept the fact they exist just like you accept mosquitoes, just like you accept 
No roaches, it's just like you accept ants, it's like you accept the birds. Accept that they're gonna be there. And remember, this is the most important thing to remember when you hear from these theorists who you could, some people may call them haters, some people may call them critics. ESPN pays people like this a lot of money. All right. There's never been a statue erected for a critic. Hey, witness on the beat. No statue has ever been erected for a critic. A person whose main role is to talk about what other people did or didn't do, can or couldn't do. No statues get built for those people. Statues do not get built for the observers who talk about it and say what everybody else can and can't do. Statues get built for people who go out there and make it happen, who go out there and do things. And I know you're one of those people. So if you want a statue for yourself, keep doing what you're doing. If you're a theorist, ain't no theorist watching the video to this point. They, they already turned the video off, so I, know, I already know. No retention for those people. Everybody, work on your game. DreAllDay.com Hey, witness on the beat.